Welcome to Seven Trumpets Prepper. In this video today, guys, I'm with my friend Randy at Incredible Tiny Homes. And Randy's going to share with you what he's building and why I'm here today. What we have here is um, uh, another tiny home. Our first one was the Hobbit House that we got so much um, notoriety from. But this one is going to be on wheels. And it's also the, the uh, I guess, the catch on this is it's entirely built from reclaimed materials. Um, barn wood, framing, metal, glass, everything has been reclaimed. And so we wanted to see what we could come up with. Of course, our design was actually built around what kind of materials we had. And, um, and the restrictions were that you know every tiny house has got 13 six height from the ground up and actually eight foot six wide. But I wanted this one to have an overhang, some detail overhang at the top. So for that reason, I had to come in a little bit, five, well, about seven and a half inches. So we're gonna have a three and a half inch overhang to give it some, some uh, detail. You know? right. Then what we wanted to do is I was thinking, wow, what it would be so great to have some sort of off the grid. And so I talked to Lucas, he's been wanting me to do off the grid and I said, let's go for it. So what we've got now is we've got our, our solar panels on the top. We've got our DC water heater down here now. We've got our batteries, two, two batteries, six volt batteries. We got at the local golf cart company. Um, so we're rigged up, we're ready to go um, for our lights and our phone. And, and I'm learning just about this myself. Lucas, he of course tells me everything that it'll, that it'll do and what it won't do. But um, I'm excited about it. And I'm even thinking about putting um, a 50 gallon drum for water out front and we'll put a little pump on that thing. So if you actually wanted to take this out in the woods and you got 50 gallons of water, I mean, you could stay however long that would last you. I'm not gonna collect the water on this one but it's virtually almost completely off the grid that we could live on this, you know. Um, a composting toilet is what it can have. Have a shower, closet, and this is eight by 16. So right here behind this wall, you have your toilet, you have a shower, and a closet inside a room with a barn door sliding back and forth. Then over here, we'll have our kitchen on the end, living room, flat screen TV that'll flip around off the barn door wall. And um, we got two lofts. This is gonna be a king size bed loft here a twin size bed loft on this end and full kitchen with the refrigerator and the whole deal so it's really neat awesome. yeah and you'll be at the mountain preppers expo as well yeah be mountain here. preppers expo um we are going to sell this there so uh we're going to take offers we're going to we're going to sell it we're going to do good yeah I'm gonna, you know we, we haven't come up with a price yet but um i guarantee you it'll be something that you can't pass up yeah awesome well guys let me take you on a journey through how we put the solar and the wind on this today and the DC water heater, how we wired that up. And uh, let's check that out now. All right, guys, so starting this project out today, we've got the inverter that's going to hook to the battery bank, and we've got the cables for it. We've got the wire loom, silicone for the brackets, because uh, we're going to make sure to silicone that, and also wire loom it so that for transport, it won't be damaged or anything. We've got the solar panels. Uh, these are from Windy Nation. And uh, we're going to mount those up. They're polycrystalline. I'll show you once we get them up on the roof. And there's the tiny house so far. And Randy's done an amazing job, just like he did with the Hobbit house. And uh, so anyway, I'm going to get up there and we'll show you the bracket mount. And then we'll uh, start the wire run from there. Now, guys, at this point, we've got the brackets on, as you can see right there. And we've got everything ready to mount. And we're going to go up here. We're going to put these together. Uh, we're going to join all three of these together. Uh, through the link ups and I'll show you that and then we're going to come down a drop and then that's going to go into the charge controller uh, in the next step and that will be coming down off the roof right there down into where the battery bank's going to be. Okay guys now at this point you can see right here that we've got the panels up on the roof the brackets are in place and we're about to mount this. Now you can see here that the connectors have been neatly brought out and sorry I'm shadowing it here a little bit but you see right here we have our drops and what we've done is as thank you sir appreciate Randy holding that there the uh, junction box is coming down you can see how we brought all these wires over now what I'm going to do is I'm going to wire loom these together um, and coat all this uh, zip tight and I'll show you that right before we drop into the house but at this point then we'll just come off with our last two drops and go into the house and I think we're going to go through uh, the ridge cap here down in but that pretty much uh, it resolves that because all you do is tie all your hots together and all your grounds together and you're done. Now guys, at this point right here, we're gonna put our drops down uh, for the wire coming from the leads. Now I've wire loomed uh, the uh, wires that are coming off the panels. 
we put wire loom on it get some of this up here where you can see it real good and now at this point we're going to drill down and drop this right here because um, Randy's going to put the ridge cap on uh, later and so we're going to just drop that right through and the good thing about that is if the system is ever expanded since that we did do it with the MC4 actually on the roof all that one has to do is unclip that right there and put either uh, some more adapters or um, the Y adapters which I really like a lot because it gives you some uh, cable along with it so you can get flexibility and then they can just tuck that under the panels here uh, to whomever the customer is that gets this from Randy and he can uh, uh, he or she, whoever owns it, they can put a bunch more solar panels. You could actually put, I'm thinking about 1,200 watts of solar on this roof, so there's a lot of space uh, for expansion. You can get about six panels of uh, PV on each side, so really neat stuff. But we'll show you the drop on the inside of the house here in a minute. Okay, guys, so what we're going to do right now is we're going to begin the work on the wind turbine. Now, this is a good craft 15-watt uh, max vertical axis wind turbine. This is going to be great for a tiny house because literally right there, there's the blade set or, or the uh, the holders for the blade set. I mean, literally, it's going to be so compact that uh, depending on how Randy wants to mount that for the customer, it can either just fold up or they can put it up on a mount and just raise it up into place. But here is the generator right here. You can see very, very small and compact. Amazing piece of equipment, that tiny right there. There's your PMG. And here is the wiring module and there's the uh, the mount so we're gonna we're gonna run this up through here we've got our uh, controller diodes and everything uh, we'll run that here in a minute and here's the blade sets um, I don't know if Randy's gonna paint this to match the roof or what but there's gonna be the blades uh, the veins to go through it uh, very aerodynamic and so we'll get all that in place and everything we'll get this mounted up and I'll show you um, on the final finish how it all looks but uh, really, in a nutshell, all you've got to do is just run that down through there. Then we'll tighten that back down, put the cotter pin at the top. That'll hold the veins in place, and, and you're, in, you're really finished. I mean, there is not a lot to it, and you're making power. All right, now, guys, at this point right here, we've got the first part of the mount onto it. Sorry, I'm getting the wire up in the way there. And that is specifically marked with the cut slot. The slot is bigger on that one that goes on the bottom. And then the smaller cut slot will go onto the top, just like so. And what will happen is that these veins have rivets, and they will sandwich in between there. Uh, and the rivet will be up against the plate like so, and then the other rivet up against that one. And I'll show you here in a moment when it's mounted. And then all at that point, you're just going to tighten the nut down and slide the cotter pin back through. And I'll show you that here just short. Okay, guys, now at this point, as you can see right there, we've got the veins in place. My thumb's slowing that down there, but uh, let me get down here where we can turn. Right there, it, it free spins very easily. And um, the design on it's very nice. And like I said, right there, you can see the veins in place. And what we're going to do now is just tighten that nut down, put the cotter pin through. That'll seat that in place. It sandwiches the veins in where they're riveted. And then at this point, we'll take the O-ring seal because we don't know, want no water moisture leaking through. So we'll put that O-ring seal up against our uh, pipe and we'll run our wire lead through there like so. And then we'll be ready uh, to begin the final finish. So guys, here's the batteries. Uh, we went with Trojan batteries for the install. Those will be wired in series, hot to negative, and then we'll wire to the inverter. And then the charge controller will be from the drops you can see right there. Those drops will come into the charge controller I'll show you here in a minute down to the battery bank so that we can pull to the inverter. And this will have a vent in here so that that can vent out. And that pretty much we're almost at the finish line with the build. Now guys right here is the final finish on the wiring. You can see right there Randy finished the drop running it in through the ceiling down to me. And then I put the clips up just to keep it neat for him so that customer have a very pleasing uh, set up there and it's not all wired all over the place um, then it comes into the charge controller right there um, as you can see both lights are green right now and what we've done is brought those two wires in from the panels to their marked slots then the two wires from the batteries down to the batteries and I'll get in the batteries in a minute and then the dump load we're going to have the dump load go to a DC element in that water heater right there and then we're also going to have it on a switch but now the, the batteries, this is how you wire these particular batteries. All right, and be careful not to mess this up. You go from positive to negative on one of them. Okay, you can see I have a hot wire designating that. And then you come off the negative on this one battery to your inverter. 
and the positive off the other battery to your inverter, okay? That's how you wire that in series. So just one more time, you take a positive to a negative on the one battery from one to the other. Then off one of the batteries, you bring a negative and the opposite battery, you bring a positive off the other end up. That way, what we've done here is we've got a lot of amperage out of two six volt batteries uh, by wiring them in series that way, just giving us a lot more versatility. Plus, buying them in six volt and wiring them in series saves roughly about a Benjamin Franklin, um, at least down here where we all live in Tennessee. So that was one reason that we uh, done that today. So. Now guys, uh, this is gonna be the, the finish for the first day's install. Um, now what we've got is uh, me and Randy fixed up a coupling uh, on the pipe. Uh, this is three quarter uh, uh, metal pipe. And so what we done is we fixed the vertical axis wind turbine up on that. We've got the wire dropped so that the customer that ends up owning this home, they can actually undo the union and they can take that piece of pipe, the other piece of pipe, the turbine, and set the turbine in the box for traveling. They can run their utility uh, pipe right here, clamp it up. There'll be a fixed clamp that'll actually hold the turbine up once that uh, we fix the other little attachment right here, and I'll show you it once we get it installed, is that it'll screw into that, and then the turbine just goes right up vertical. You clamp it right there, and it's making you power. Right now, Randy's finishing this box up, but once that uh, he gets done with that, the wire will drop in and go over and then just clamp onto those batteries, and it'll trickle charge to that along with the solar. So you've got redundancy on your build. All right, guys, so it's day two on the job site. And you can see right here that I've installed for Randy, uh, for his customer, one of these SES water heater elements that are adjustable. And we've got the leads coming off right here you're hot in your ground. And what I've done is I've wired from the dump load the ground coming over, and so that'll wire nut in with this. And then we're also going to have the ground that's dropping in right here from the switch, um, and that's just gonna let it go on and off. And the hot will tie in direct to the battery over here as far as the switch goes. That way when you turn it on, it's pulling from the bank. Now as far as the hot goes from the dump load, it's just gonna bypass, so it'll actually be brought over to here and wire nut in right there. So you'll actually have all three hots wired nutted together here. And then you'll have all three grounds wire nutted together here. The only difference with that is, is up top, the ground up top will just wire nut direct over to here and bypass the switch so that all you're ever turning on and off is the hot, uh, the hot to close the circuit. But as far as the dump load goes, all that power will always directly feed. And now this is a 250 watt element and the water heater, uh, he'll have all the water uh, lines ran to it and everything, but this will always be heating for you. So when the sun's out, you've got a 300 watt setup, so it's always dump and load. Uh, like right now, the battery is charged up again, and so all that would be dumping to the water heater, keeping you uh, hot water. And then if you ever do like have a situation where it's at nighttime and you need to turn the water on, and heat it, then you can just flip the switch and you're feeding the power, but I'll show you the wiring set up here once that it's completely finished. Okay guys, now that we've almost got the water heater wiring finished and we're gonna tuck that while I'm waiting for the switch to get wired in on the wall in there while Randy's finishing up, uh, I'm gonna go over here and show you uh, the final finish that I'm about to do on the turbine. Now, this is uh, three wires coming out that's DC, and what's gonna go down is that that's gonna get rectified to 12 volt. As you can see, there's the three wires dropping out and I taped the clip up real good. Probably gonna wire loom that later, but just for the time being to get this done today for a uh, check, we're gonna just leave that be for the moment. And uh, anyway, in the future though, that wire loom over that, and then you have this coated cable that's DC, and so those three wires are coming down. Now what's gonna happen is when that comes down the pipe, and that pipe will be up right there in just a minute, you'll see this on the final finish. That pipe just threads into this, and the wire drops into the side of the box, and it's gonna go in to right there, and you'll see it come into this utility conduit. And what'll happen is you just hook those three pins in, and the rectifier, uh, which is right here, those three pins will go to that, and then it'll drop out to 12 volt DC, and then I'll just have a piece of wire that the customer can just, uh, that'll already be wired up to the batteries over here. So when they plug those three wires in, then their wind turbine's working as well. And that'll be a trickle charge to the batteries. So guys, there's the wind generator up now. 
and we've got the pole mount in place. Now we got that temporary right there until we make a final adjustment on it. But you can see right there it comes in and it drops in the side of our box back here and the wires come down. Now that comes to three little clips that are going, going to go into a three clip bus bar right here and these three wires will come to that and then the rectifier is in there you can see it right there the module and i've got that wire nutted off and then that will come over to these two wires right here which will come over and drop to the hot and the ground and that way feeding a trickle charge to the batteries uh, when the turbine's going and that pretty much concludes uh, the wind turbine install and the solar install now as far as the uh, water heater goes I'll show you the final finish on that because now we're not going to finish the wiring today until um, the customer actually takes on the house that way when the water is attached we can uh, dump load the, the water and everything but the hot right there will just connect and then this hot here will connect into the dump just like it's supposed to be and that finishes that out as well so guys here's a final look at the uh, water heater as far as that goes as you can see right here um, the wires coming in the hot and the ground is just passing directly through back to the battery. Where that's coming in right here is just right there. So the customer can just flick the switch on or off if they want the water heat uh, to heat up. And the rest of the time during the daytime when it's dumping, uh, the dump load will go direct to it and they can set their thermostat on it how they want. And then if it's night time and they need to heat their water, then they can flick it on. And now, the thing to consider upon is that's only a 250 watt element at 12 volt DC. Now compared to the energy savings that you're going to have now because the original was a 1500 watt 120 volt AC uh, element. So it's going to be quite a considerable less amount of uh, power used and still get hot water so that's really nice and you're not having to run up an electric bill either because it's going to be dumping off your solar so you're never wasting any power and the battery bank was already uh, recharged back up now so that the AC can run again so just really neat and uh, flip it on right here and we can see the power there you go the uh, meter reading so the battery the battery voltage is over 13 and we're ready to put out AC power so that's uh, as far as the final finish goes, that's as far as we'll get right now um, with this, but the uh, cover goes on the switch and this whole setup's done. Well, Randy, I think the, the house really turned out well for the alternative energy install. I think uh, I think it'll be a huge selling point for you know, a customer. Oh, definitely. I hope so. Yeah. Definitely. And I appreciate you letting yes, me come out and do the install. And if there's anything you want to share with the guys? Oh, I tell you what, go to our website, incrediblecountyhomes.com, and you'll see the uh, more pictures pictures of this one the inside as soon as we get done i've got three days i'll finish this um also we'll do custom homes and we are beginning to look into doing some financing for folks so um it's really exciting to that end and we can get to you with more information about how we can handle that it's really on a one-to-one -one basis how we can work that out but uh please go to that and get my phone number contact me personally and be glad to talk to you awesome well, guys, until we see you again here at Seven Trumpets Prepper Channel, I hope you have a most blessed day in Yahushua. That'll be a great video. Awesome.